what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video and we are back to doing some instructional how-to videos we're going to be installing some lightweight parts on the Camaro S <laughs> Again, for the very last time, guys, when this video goes up, it'll be the last video before the end of the giveaway. And we've got, of course, the 2020 Honda Grom, which is the giveaway vehicle uh, for the first giveaway that we're running on the merchandise website store, jorgespeedshop.com, link in the description below. Every $20 spent is four entries guys from now until the end of the giveaway which is october 31st so make sure you go get your orders in so that you can get your entries and possibly win this amazing 2020 honda grom now let's get right to the video guys because today we are going to make this car a little bit faster now for those of you that are new to the channel this is my 2019 camaro ss and it, it has quite a bit of modifications done both visually and performance wise. This thing has gone a best of a 959 at 143 miles an hour with a heads and cam package, headers 85, basically a full bolt on car and 175 shot of nitrous. So it performs really, really well. And it is making quite a bit of power for the stock bottom end because it's still a bone stock bottom end on the car and i don't want to throw any more power at it but if you want to go faster there's other things you can do mainly weight reduction so i do have a passenger seat removed rear muffler dumped out in the back but today we're going to be doing a major major weight reduction modification and that is what we have here in this box here and that is actually focused on this section right here guys today we're going to be installing the aerospace street rotors and calipers in the front if you can save rotating weight guys it makes the car much much faster so the aerospace brakes are going to be replacing this big huge caliper and a rotor with a lightweight version of it that is still going to be suitable for the street it's not the ultra light drag setup and i am excited to see just how they're going to perform so today we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to do the installation and what the differences in weight really are we've got the a scale to check all that and let's get right to the video this is the aerospace components you guys see here in the caliper aerospace components front brake kit the rotor is a vented rotor so this is the street kit they do have a version of this where it's just a solid rotor but that is a drag kit only and it's for cars that are i believe under 3,000 pounds which this guy is not so this whole kit here actually i got used off of a guy on facebook group it comes with everything if you guys can see here it has the bracket that's needed to mount these new calipers the rotors the brake pads which are still in really good condition and also very important it comes with the plug and play um, kit so it's just bolts right up to the factory lines so this whole kit here guys retails for about eleven hundred dollars with the plug and play kit from gpi and as you can see it's actually a two-piece rotor so it's got the aluminum hat and then the steel rotor and this is what really saves a lot of the weight guys this aluminum hat here saves a lot of the weight and it is advertised that this setup should save about 40 pounds in the front so here we've got the stock rotor and caliper and guys this caliper is massive this shouldn't be too difficult of an install the instructions are kind of vague but we do need to remove this caliper first there's two main bolts in the back and then of course you've got to remove this brake line here which has a few sensors connected here which we got to remove and in the brake line 
you have this tab here that you have to pop out so that the brake line can come loose and you loosen up the screw here on this hard line so one pro tip if you are removing and disconnecting the brake line there go ahead and find a way to slam on the brake and keep the brake pressure applied so that you don't have any leaking fluid i removed the two caliper bolts in the back we were able to get the caliper loosened up and we just got the rotor removed key word of advice guys the rotor does get held in place by this uh, t30 screw um that's the only thing holding the rotor in place so once you remove that it becomes super easy to just slide the rotor off now this is kind of what we are left with and what we got to do is we got to remove this heat shield and that is held on by these, a couple millimeter bolts and then we can get ready to remove the brake line which is in the back which is going to be basically back here and once we remove the brake line we'll have all the components out of the way so that we can get to doing a little bit of modifications here that we're gonna need to do specifically here on this top of the spindle here. We are gonna have to grind off a little bit for the new rotor, but we're moving along nicely. And just for comparison, guys, this is the factory stock rotor and this is the aerospace rotor. As you guys can see, it's quite a bit smaller and quite a bit thinner as well. And, oh yeah, definitely, this thing weighs a ton and this thing i mean i can pick it up like nothing so definitely going to be a ton of weight savings here i'm super excited but let's continue so we've removed this little cover here and you can see the brake line there i moved the caliper down to the bottom i loosened up this brake line from here i've got to remove the wheel speed sensor from the brake line here and then all we have to do now, I removed this uh, clip here that holds it in place. Uh, just kind of wiggle it out with like a little flat head, pop this out. And now to remove the brake line, we just have to unscrew this piece here and just have some towels ready. I do have the brake applied, so it shouldn't spill that much, but it's still good to have a little bit there. And then once that's over, this caliper will be completely loose and we can remove it. And then we'll go ahead and weigh everything and show you guys exactly what the weight savings is going to be. Well guys, here you have it. We've removed the brake line. It's super easy. And as you guys can see, with the brake deep pressed down, there is very minimal leaking. It's not flowing anything, which is what we want. And now to the moment of truth, guys, how much am I saving between the big OEM? Still four piston, guys. So you see here, this is a four piston setup. And this is also a four piston setup. So it's very, very similar setup here, guys, except this is just much smaller. And from my understanding, it does still help the car brake and feel almost as good as OEM, but with much, much more weight savings. So we're gonna bust out the scale and we're gonna weigh individually. We'll go ahead and weigh each rotor to show you the difference in the rotor weight and then in the caliper weight. And then at the end, give you a total weight savings on the two systems. Let's go ahead and weigh the OEM rotor first. Oh. The rotor itself weighs 25.6 pounds. So 25.6 pounds for the OEM rotor. And let's go ahead and zero this out. No zero, let's see what the new aerospace rotor weighs. Only 10 and a half pounds. So just in rotors alone we're saving almost over 15 pounds of a rotational weight guys that is very very impressive uh, now now let's look at what the calipers weigh so go first with the oem one please. 
12.8 pounds so 12.8 pounds for the oem so 12.8 pounds for the oem caliper and the aerospace brake caliper is going to come in at <laughs> guys check it out it doesn't even this scale doesn't even actually register the weight of this caliper which means that it's probably somewhere around maybe the one pound mark i mean i, I don't know what to tell you um th this bathroom scale doesn't even register the weight of this caliper so let's just say about another 10 pounds there so man that is impressive Whew, i'll put the math up here but you're looking at almost 26 to 27 pounds saved that is pretty significant for one side when we do the other side that means the total weight savings on the front of this car is going to be almost right at 50 pounds so that that is impressive let's go ahead and get this back on the car now to install it back guys there is a certain way you want the brackets done so it comes with this bracket here and this bracket goes facing this way like this so it's got a spacer that goes in between on the front of the spindle and then the bolt in the back and that goes that way and then here we have some spacers and shims for the caliper now the one caveat to this guys is when we install the hat or the new rotor in here it actually will hit on the spindle here so we do have to grind off a bit of this part here well there you have it guys now i grinded up above the top part here but really the only part you got to really grind is this lower part right here you guys can see kind of on the back side and now when you put the rotor in let's see if i can do this one-handed here there you go and get that centered in right there you go you guys can see it clears just enough i mean it's not going to be hitting the spindle anymore and the rotor is completely bottomed in which is perfect so we've got that taken care of now we can go ahead and install the caliper but before we put the rotor on i do want to go ahead and install this caliper bracket and that'll make it easy to go ahead and put the caliper on and not have to deal with the rotor being in its place but right now we've got the spindle grinded down super easy let's go ahead and put the caliper bracket on and then we can mount the caliper bolt everything back up and hope that there's no leaks we are all done here guys now i haven't put a lot of stuff back together because i still want to make sure when we bleed the brakes that we don't have any leaks now everything came kind of pre-assembled so the only place we might have leaks is at the hard line there but one thing we're going to do is check so we've got one side done and of course once you do one side the second side comes so much easier now i have heard a lot of people online talk about the shims and spacers for this thing now i got this kit used so it already had the available shims and spacers and it seem to fit work fit perfectly and i mean it still has loose rotor there and everything looks good so now we just got to bleed the brakes and to bleed the brakes what i'm gonna do is there's this zerk fitting here down the bottom i'm gonna just loosen up this bottom fitting here to see if it'll run through all the air and push it out that way now one thing that we're going to use to help make this Thing easier is this power bleeder right here guys and what this does is this just helps you put pressure on the system similar to pumping similar to pumping the brakes until all the things go out with this you don't have to turn the car on you don't have to pump the brakes you literally will just replace the cap with this pump in some positive pressure you want to be at about one bar or about actually 10 to 15 psi and then all you'll do is once you generate the pressure you come back down to each brake and like we were mentioning i'm going to release that so that the air bubble start it'll start pushing the fluid out until 
there is no more air bubbles and then you'll see just a constant little bit of fluid that's when you know you're good to go and you can go one by one all the way around as long as you still have some pressure in this system which is super awesome and makes things so much easier okay so we've got the car back on the ground and man check it out these aerospace brakes look pretty nice and everything fit perfectly i did the bleeding and everything looked good no leaks anywhere on either side now we've got to go on a test drive so we're gonna go drive around hope everything looks good and feels good and give you guys my thoughts on what the brakes feel like there you guys have it i will say the brakes feel like i've got to go all the way down farther into the pedal um i did bleed them but i think we just need a little bit more fluid in the brake reservoir so we'll probably be go and top that off and geez okay well got that sucked into the intake tract <laughs> that's part of that what that velocitech will do but other than that it still stops just fine and doesn't seem to have any issues no leaks i don't see any of that stuff so I think we are good to go here guys now is just going to be a matter of uh, basically testing this out and seeing how the kit performs at the track with that being said guys thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful and instructional for you guys and if you enjoyed this and you like how-to videos specifically dealing with the gen 6 camaro Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button because we've got a lot of stuff coming for this thing later on down the road and we've done a lot to it that you can go back and look at my previous videos. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.